What's up everybody? Sorry, the most cliche YouTuber intro ever. Um, I apologize for that. My name is Mikey and uh, we are doing something really exciting, something very different today because we are kicking off summer. Can we get an amen for summer in the chat? Um, or I don't know, what, what's another word for summer? Yeehaw! Say yeehaw in the chat if you're ready for summer um, because it's officially uh, our way of kicking off summer today. You guys are joining us. We're doing something very special. Um, this is our like surprise water balloon fight. Is that a good name for it? That's a great name. We're going to random students' houses and we're challenging them to a water balloon fight. They have no idea that we're coming and we're going to get it all on video for you guys to enjoy um, in your own time. Now, we might start doing more stuff like this so you just never know when we're going to show up to your house and you do something know. crazy. Maybe it'll be a summer thing. If you see a blue Kia, get ready. You better run. Yeah. <laughs> um, they're going to run away from all blue Kias <laughs> now. That's going to be so funny. Um, so we are going to go to, again, a couple of different students' houses and just challenge them to a water balloon fight today. They have no idea we're coming and you guys get to join us. So uh, enjoy, enjoy this and uh, have some fun in the chat section with this. I don't know. Make fun of us. I'm going to hit someone in the face. You're, you're gonna aim for their yeah, face? Can you delete that part? Maybe I uh, that's awkward. <laughs> probably not. <laughs> um, anyways, uh, headshots are allowed. I probably will. Nope, we're probably gonna get hit in the head. Oh, yeah. Probably more than they are. Oh, anyways, yeah. um, well, happy summer, everybody, and uh, congratulations. You're watching this video. Hey, Amen. Awkward. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot to mention uh, how we're doing this exactly because it might not make sense in the video unless you understand. Um, so we're going to their house. We're going to knock on their door and then run to like their yard or like in front, front of their yeah, place. Yeah, their and we're going to have a uh, small trash bag full of water balloons and we're going to tell them that they have five seconds and the war is going to begin. So that's when we go. We're just going to start pegging them. Alex, anything to add to that? Bro, just get ready, man. It's going to get crazy. Let's, get Let's do it. Whoa. Heroes work there. <laughs> Heroes work. All right, so we're at our first location. We're getting the water balloons ready. It's about to go down. It's about to get crazy. Who do you think thinks gonna win, Alex or student? The world will never know, or they'll know in a couple seconds. I think they know, I don't know. I hope it's the right house. Not answering. You wanna call him? This doesn't look suspicious or anything. It's a large man in a blue shirt with a green bandana and a bucket of water balloons. Kinda looks like he's about ready to like rob a Ron John surf shop. <laughs> Hey, what's up, Roger? Hey, Alex has something for you, bro. Yeah. Bro, sweet hat. He's right there, dude. He's got to talk to you about something. Ready. Five, four, three, two, one. Dude, you haven't hit him once, once, Alex. Dude, he's dodging all of them. Are you out? No, you haven't hit him once. Oh, you got him, you got him. All right. <laughs> That's shrapnel <laughs> hug. Oh! <laughs> Dude, he has more. Wow. Oh. All right. Well, we want. We want to sit. Uh, <laughs> since it's quarantine, uh, elbow bump. Hey. As a. As a. Congratulations. Roderick, thanks for participating. Surprise water balloon fight. <laughs> On to the next one. Let's go to the next one. Jude Gray. 
it's time to come outside. Okay. Let's go. You got five seconds before Mikey starts throwing water balloons at you. Five, four, three. Go grab some water balloons. Go get yours. Empty those pockets, dude. Oh my goodness, what an arm. Let's go. Woo! <laughs> Let's go, dude. Oh, man. Oh, leg shot. Oh, your kidney. Yeah. Man. How do we feel? Hey, man. Hey. <laughs> All right, we're here at house number three. G totally whooped me in that last one. Uh, this time it's Alex's turn. We're how, out of here. How you feeling, bro? Bro, I'm ready. Bro, he looks so intimidating. Thanks, man. We won't tell you who it is, but we're gonna give you a quick sneak peek. It appears to be on their garage door I think that's Medusa. Not quite sure. Someone confirm in the chat section. Pretty sure that's who that is. Don't look at her eyes, you'll turn to stone. Let's do this. Hey, can you get can you get your whole crew out here? You guys need to come out here. Five, what? four. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, he didn't even pop. <laughs> Alex, Alex, you're severely outnumbered. If you have more, keep pegging him. We just want you to know it's summer and this is our way of doing it. Here, here, peg him, peg him. We love you guys. We're going to the next one. Oh, I missed. <laughs> what? What? Hey, go get your sister and come outside. Let's go. Sam, step up, bro. Let's go, Sarah. Oh, Sarah's in it. Let's go. Hey, Ben. Oh, good one. Oh, dude, Sarah, you got an arm. Let's go. Oh, get up. Get up. Let's go. Bro, Sarah's the MVP out here. Oh, you're out of balloons? Oh, no. Sam, pick up his bucket and dump it on. Oh, God. Oh, man. Oh, wait. Do you have water in here? Go grab yours. Go grab yours. <laughs> Amen. Woo! Hey, tell your family happy summer. Thank you guys. All right, here we go. The last and final house. Oh, that's so nice. Nice table. Let's see, who could that be? That's a cool chair. What's up, Jacob? How you doing, man? Hey, come here real quick, bro. Uh, okay, you probably don't need them. Gotta get his slides on. <laughs> Rookie. Right there, five, four, three, two, one, let's go. Oh gosh, you just hit there. Oh my god. I'm seeing you guys too. 
This is really fun. We uh hey, great job, man. Too. Yeah. We drove by you. Yeah, you were out here, you were walking out and we like waved. <laughs> yeah, that was us. Hey everybody, thank you so much for joining us for our water balloon fight party, if you will. It is officially summer. We declare it. We declare summer. Uh, it's happening. It is. To those who participated in the water balloon fights, thank you so much. Uh, you guys did a great job. You guys are champions and you went with it. And who knows, we might show up at your house with something different. In fact, if you have any ideas of what we can do in the future at, at people's homes, let us know in the chat section. That sounds like fun. Or you can email Alex Weirda at aweirda at communitycc.com. Or is it dot .gov? Either one. <laughs> Either one. Uh, actually, it goes, it goes to the same place. <laughs> Uh, well, hey, um, we have some cool stuff in store for you guys tonight in honor of summer being kicked off officially. We have what we're calling after parties. Um, we have three different options for you guys, and all of these links are in the description down below. When we are done with service, um, actually when we're done with life groups, that's correct. When we're done with life groups, you have three options. One of them, you can play Jackbox games on Twitch with Jonathan. You can have your own, um, you can play Jeopardy with Alex on Zoom. Come on. There you go. Are you gonna have a suit and like a microphone? Maybe. Ooh, who knows? knows? Or you can play Fortnite with me on my personal Twitch account. All three of those links are down below. After your groups, you will go to those um, and you can hang out with us to celebrate summer together. How fun is that? Um, well, hey, we're gonna transition into our time of worship. Man, use this as an opportunity to really engage um, no matter what you're doing. Hey, kick off your summer the right way with worship. How's that sound, Alex? Dude, sounds great. Woo. Let's worship, people. Let's do it. Jonathan, take it away, man. Stand up wherever we are and get ready to sing songs to God about how good he is to us and his coming kingdom. Let's sing this song together. See the clock? The clock is ticking. Your kingdom's moving, moving forward. Fulfill your promise that grace and mercy will abide here, will abide. have to go the world has to know your kingdom's moving forward we can't stay here cause you are near your kingdom's moving forward sing as we live the gospel as we live the gospel, may we be a model to the nations. With great ambition, with great ambition, we receive your mission, spark revival. Spark revival. We have to go. The world has to know. Your kingdom's moving forward. We can't stay here. Cause you are near. Your kingdom's moving forward. We have to go. The world has to know your kingdom's moving forward. As you unite your heart to mine, your kingdom's moving forward. Let's see, we can't stay here. We can't stay here. We have to go, a love so great that saves the soul. I once was lost, but now I see, we'll be with him for eternity. We can't stay here, we have to go, a love so great that saves my soul. I once was blind, but 
now I see will be with him for eternity we have to go the world has to know your kingdom's moving forward we can't stay here cause you are near your kingdom's moving forward we have to go the world has to know your kingdom's moving forward as you unite your heart to mine your kingdom's moving forward Amen. What an awesome, awesome thing to remind ourselves of, that God's kingdom is continuously coming closer and closer to earth. And one day, that kingdom is going to be established here physically here on earth. And, and that's only possible because we have this sacrifice, Jesus, that starts that redemption process. And so we're going to sing one more song about that sacrifice and how that is the ultimate portrayal of God's love for us. So let's sing this song, Reckless Love. Before I spoke, before I spoke a word, you were singing over me. have been so, so good to me. Before I took a breath, you breathed your life in me. You have been so, so kind to me. Still you give your 
no shadow. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. No wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. So get no shadow. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. Will you give yourself away? Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. pray as we end this time of worship together. Heavenly Father, God, thank you we, that we have an opportunity to recognize and understand that you are Jesus and that you have saved us. If we cast our cares upon you, if we confess you as Lord and as Savior and as God of our lives, you are so quick to redeem us. The blood on the cross is the blood that was shed for me and for those watching, and for, and for everyone across the world that proclaims Jesus Christ as Lord. We pray these wonderful, beautiful, the words of truth that we sing, that you are a God who loves us, that your kingdom is coming. We proclaim these words as we worship you, and as we listen, as we hear this message today. And so you are wonderful, and awesome name we pray. In the name of Jesus, amen. And amen. Put some amens in the chat. We're going to hand it off to the next part of our service. Welcome, high school students. Uh, man, we're starting a new series tonight, which I'm so excited about. It's called When I Feel Blank. We're talking all about emotions. Every single person on the face of this earth has experienced emotions from anger to anxiety, to frustration, to sadness, to joy. We have all experienced emotions before. Maybe some of us don't show our emotions the same way, but I promise you all of us, all of us have emotions. The question is this, as followers of Jesus, how do we respond to the emotions that we have? I'm so excited for this series. And uh, I hope that it, it helps you and shows you how to work through some of your emotions that you may be experiencing right now or maybe down the road. Before we jump in to this new group of lessons, will you please join me as we pray? Dear Lord, thank you so much for the time tonight to talk about emotions, how to handle emotions and what to do with those emotions when they arise. There are all sorts of feelings that go on within our life. And Lord, I just pray that as we experience these, that we would respond in the way that you need us to and want us to. And Lord, I pray for tonight's um, Bible passage, that it speaks truth into our lives, that we would be changed forever because of it. It's in Jesus' name I pray. And everyone said in the chat section, amen. Well, like I said before, we are talking all about emotions or feelings, however you want to call that. Now, here's kind of the stereotype that I've seen within my own life um, through other people. There's this stereotype that guys maybe don't experience or have the same emotions that girls do or experience the same feelings or maybe girls are more feelings based and guys are less feeling based and from my experience in my own life i have not seen that to be true but what i have seen to be true is that me for me as a guy this is just my own experience 
I have these feelings and emotions, but I suppress them inside because I don't want other people to see them. Because there's a stereotype that if I, a man, if I show my feelings, if I show my emotions, then people will judge me in a certain way. But I'm here to tell you today, and we all know this is true, we all have feelings. Whether they're all internal or we show them out to other people, we all experience feelings. Before we dive into any part of our main passage tonight, I just want to give you three quick things. One, two, three. Three quick things that I believe are true, uh, like foundational statements for feelings and emotions as we move forward in this group of lessons. Here's the first one. Uh, And please write these down. Your emotions do not define you. Okay? Your emotions do not define you. Do not think just because you are angry one week that you were an angry person. Do not think that just because you struggle with um, self-worth or feeling um, shame, I mean, you are not a person who is not valuable, right? Do not let these emotions define the person that you are um, in any given moment. That's the very first thing you need to write down before we move further. The second thing is this, our heart is deceiving. In fact, we're actually even told in scripture that our heart is so deceiving, right? The things that we are feeling are not necessarily true all the time. And we know that we have this battle with our, with our heart and our mind as we're thinking through emotions and these moments, but our heart can be a very tricky thing. And we have to always go to God asking him for wisdom as we're experiencing emotions in our heart. And here's the last thing. It's this, what you do with, with your emotions is a choice. Let me say that again. What you decide to do with your emotions is a choice. All of us can make the choice. We all have the opportunity to make a choice, whether right or wrong, in moments of anger. We can choose um, to respond to it in a negative way or a positive way. Look, our emotions and what we do with them is absolutely a choice. And, and that is what I want to start with before we get any further, kind of to define as we move along in this series. But today specifically, today we are talking about this concept of when I feel worthless. Now, there are a couple other words that you can plug into this statement. When I feel um, full of shame, when I feel less than, when I don't feel valuable, when I feel worthless. Now, I know for me in my life, and the reason I chose this specific one to kick us off, um, it's because in my own life, if I were to be completely honest with you, man, I have struggled with this. Right? Maybe not in, in the most recent time of my life, but I have, and I certainly remember in high school, especially ninth and 10th grade, right? Shout out to all my ninth and 10th graders in the chat. Say what's up. I don't know, whatever you want to do. When I was in ninth and 10th grade, I really struggled with this. And I struggled with it to the point that it changed who I was. It affected the things that I said, the people I hung out with, the, the clothes that I wore, the shoes that I decided to buy, right? Everything kind of hinged on this whole idea of me feeling like I wasn't valuable or people didn't see me um, that, I, that I had worth. But I'm here to tell you tonight, man, what you do with that is really important. If, if this is something that you have thought before or felt before, it is so crucially important as a follower of Jesus that you would respond in a way that is godly, that you would respond in a way that is founded in the truth of God. We're actually going to read a story tonight where we're going to see this whole concept of being uh, valued or being worthless or feeling worthless and what to do in that moment and what Jesus says about our value, what Jesus says about our worth. Man, I distinctly remember coming home one day in ninth grade and I told my mom that if I didn't have a certain pair of shoes that I was not going to be cool, right? Or I wasn't going to feel valuable. And I remember having this conversation with my mom and she refused to buy me these shoes because of my reasoning. Man, this is such an important thing to think about, especially in in this time of your life, feeling valued or feeling worthless. Well, the story that we're talking about tonight is quite a classic story that it's an interaction with Jesus and somebody else. And and in this interaction, Jesus is talking to a Samaritan woman and they're they're communicating at a well. They're sitting down at a well uh, to draw water and Jesus has this conversation with a Samaritan woman. We're going to be in John chapter 4 tonight, verses 4 through 26. This is a pretty hefty chunk of scripture. So if you have your Bibles, please open it up and follow along with me. Um, Buckle up, bear with me. It is a little bit longer, but man, this is so important as we talk about feeling worthless or feeling full of shame. Um, So let me read this starting in verse 4. Now he had to go through Samaria. Uh, So he came to a town in Samaria called Sikshar. 
Near the plot of ground Jacob had given to his son Joseph, Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired as he was from his journey, sat down by the well, and it was about noon. Well, then a Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Will you give me a drink? His disciples had gone into the town to buy food. So Jesus is right now by himself, and he's sitting next to this Samaritan woman asking for water. The Samaritan woman said to him, You are a Jew, and I am a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? For Jews do not associate with Samaritans. Now, I'm not going to get into this tonight, but there was a very, very deep um, kind of uh, dis disruption between the Samaritans and the Jews. They just didn't get along. They didn't see each other as equal. And to top, to top it off, Jesus uh, is a man, right? And the Samaritan woman is a, wo a woman. And at this point in history, man, the, 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 the relationship between a man and a woman was just different. The way that they saw each other was just different, right? So at this point in history, it is a really big deal for a Jewish man to be talking to a Samaritan woman, right? It's a double whammy. But let's keep going here as he's communicating with her. Jesus answered her, if you know, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that asks for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. So now Jesus is talking about this living water of some sort, right? Sir, the woman said, you have nothing to draw water with and the well is deep. Where can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well and drank from it himself, as did also his sons and his livestock? Jesus answered, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks the water that I give them will never thirst. Right? Talking about the living water. He's talking about himself, by the way. Right? Indeed, the water I give them will become, uh, sorry, will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life the woman said to him sir give me this water so that i won't get thirsty and have to keep coming here to draw water he told her go call your husband and come back i have no husband she replied jesus said to her you are right when you say that you have no husband the fact is you have had five husbands and the man you now have is not even your husband what you have just said is quite true sir the woman said, I can see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshiped on this mountain, but the Jews claim that the place where we must worship is in Jerusalem. Woman, Jesus replied, believe me, a time is coming when you will worship the father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You Samaritans worship what you do not know. We worship what we do know for salvation is from the Jews. Yet a time is coming and has now come that when the true worshipers will worship the Father in the spirit and in the truth, for they are the kind of worshipers the Father seeks. God is spirit and his worship must be, his worshipers must worship in the spirit and in truth. Sorry about that. The woman said, I know that Messiah called Christ is coming. And when he comes, he will explain everything to us. Then Jesus declared, I, the one who is speaking to you, I am he. So we see this interaction between Ju Jesus, the son of God, and this Samaritan woman. And there's a couple things throughout this that just, that to me, scream the word worthless or value, right? And the word value shows up as Jesus is talking about him being the living water, bringing um, life to all people, right? Bringing value to all people. But then we also see on the other side, the Samaritan woman, who's obviously in this situation in her life where, well, maybe she doesn't feel uh, uh, like she has worth, she feels worthless, right? And we see this interaction between the two of them taking place. I have three things for you guys tonight to write down as we're talking about how Jesus defines our worth, how Jesus communicates with us about who we are and who he says that we are. Here's the first thing. The very first thing I want you to write down is this, Jesus knows, right? K-N-O-W-S, Jesus knows. I, I love this part of the story as Jesus sits down with this woman and he says, I know right? I know that you do not have one husband, right? And the guy that you're with right now is not even your husband, right? Jesus clearly shows her that he knows exactly what's going on in her life. Now, the interesting thing about this is, is even though this is not a great situation for her, Jesus is saying, look, I, I see you and I know you and I hear you in this moment. Jesus right there in front of her sees right into her life, even the most shameful the most uh, maybe depleting and maybe the most private part of her life. And he calls it out right in front of her. Now for you and I, what does this mean? Right? This means that Jesus knows everything about us. 
Jesus knows our deepest insecurities. Jesus knows our deepest hurts, our deepest pains. He knows our deepest thoughts that nobody else knows. He's the son of God. Jesus knows everything about you and everything about me. But then it leads us to our next point. And I believe this is so powerful. Now that we have the first one in place, the second one is this. Jesus looks deeper. In the chat section, let us know. Say the word deeper if you believe this. Jesus sees deeper. Even though Jesus sees the most shameful parts of our life, potentially the parts of our life that make us feel so incredibly worthless, Jesus looks deeper than that. Jesus sees through that. Jesus sees who we could be in him. And I love this, that Jesus starts talking with this woman about this living water. And he says, look, the water from this well, just this plain old water, is going to hydrate you, right, physically. But the living water that I'm talking about, it's going to fulfill you spiritually, eternally, forever. It's going to bring you value, life, and worth, just the way it was intended from the beginning. Even though Jesus sees everything about us, he also knows that there is so much incredible potential spiritually in all of us, which is exactly what led Jesus to do what he did on the cross, to bring life, to bring value, to bring worth to every single human being. Yes, even you. And yes, even me. Through my pain, through my mistakes, through my shame, we can have value and worth through Jesus, who is the living water of life. Can I get an amen in the chat for that? That is such an amazing thing to hear and to know in our own lives. Well, here's the last thing we learned from this story, and it's this. Go ahead and write this down. Jesus makes us worthy. And it, and it really ties into our last two points, and it finishes this thought out very nicely. Jesus makes us worthy, right? We don't define our worth and our value. Jesus defines our worth and our value. And let me tell you tonight, right now, maybe you've never heard this before. Jesus died on the cross for you. Right? Jesus surrendered his own life for the sake of your pain and your sin and your shame. And that is exactly the way that Jesus defines your value. Jesus sees that you are so valuable that it was worth him getting on a cross, dying for you so that you could be made whole through him. Jesus makes us worthy. Man, even when I feel worthless, I can look to the cross. When I feel worthless, I can look to how Jesus sees through my shame and he sees a beautiful creation worth dying for. And that changes the game. That changes the way I think. It changes the way I see other people, right? This should change the way that we see our own family members. Even when they hurt us, they are valued by Christ. Even when I feel worthless, Jesus died for me. Even when you feel worthless, Jesus died for you. Man, I want to challenge you guys tonight as you go throughout uh, the rest of your night, but also through this week, to, to think through that filter and, and have the thought every single day this week, how does Jesus see me? Because, man, sometimes I feel worthless. But, man, remember, my emotions and my feelings can be very deceiving the fact, the truth of the matter is that Jesus sees through that and he makes you and I worthy. That is the truth of the gospel. When I feel worthless, Jesus says otherwise. Well, what we're going to do now is I'm going to pray for us and then you're going to go into your time of life groups, spending time with your groups, talking about this concept and idea of feeling worthless, but also being made whole and new in Jesus Christ alone. So let me pray for us, and I'm going to dismiss this to our life group time. Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you so much for the gospel and everything that it stands for. God, we know that we are not worthless in your eyes. God, we know that we are, we are, we are seen by you. You see us, you know us, and even through our shame and even through our biggest setbacks, God, you make us whole and make us new. Even when we feel worthless, you make us new and you make us whole. God, we love you. It's in Jesus' powerful name that we all pray. And everyone said in the chat section, amen. Well, we're going to go into our group time. So your group leader should have already sent you a group link that you can click on joining into your Zoom group to talk about this even further. But please remember that tonight is super special. After your group time, you can join one of three after parties. You can hang out with Jonathan on our student ministry Twitch account playing Jackbox games. You can join Alex on Zoom as he plays some Jeopardy style games, or you can join me on my personal Twitch account as we play Fortnite 
together. All of those links can be found both in our uh, bio of our Instagram, but also down below in the description of this video. You guys are awesome. Have a great week and we will see you all later. Peace out.